last one is technology. Okay. Technology. That, yeah. okay. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to have that as your first, like social media, you know? No. I was ready for it. But <laughs> Those okay. are the basic. The first ones I brought up were the basic right. that people should look at. The fifth one is this is a tool yeah. that you're using or overusing. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know that I'm prioritizing one over the other. Okay. But when I think about it, sleep will still be my number one. Oh, okay. But the rest of them, think about how maybe in like a, a, a circle, all yeah. of them are factors right. into kind of right, affecting right, mental right. health. But the fifth is technology, okay. specifically social media. Mm -hmm. However, our brains were not made to be overstimulated to this degree. Okay. And I think that there is a cost of that overstimulation, right? Okay. The overstim like our brains are almost like computers, right? right. We get input, mm -hmm. we process the input, yeah. and then we react to the input. Yeah. Now we're all getting input mm -hmm. from all over. My goodness. Just <laughs> we're we're the most us. connected like, yeah. we've ever been in this world, mm -hmm. right? Not just to what's going on in your neighborhood, mm -hmm. but what's going on in your country, across the across globe, across the world. Yeah. All of that stimuli is fine and dandy, but mm -hmm. it's the, the pace of it, the frequency of it, yeah. it's a lot. And then we're not taking the time to sleep, mm -hmm. to rest, mm -hmm. to process. So we are all overreacting to it. You are right. And yeah. so everything in moderation. Much, everything in yeah. moderation. Yeah. But the thing is, it's hard to really control. I mean, there's just so much data. Right. And people can get it all day, every day. Mm -hmm. Even even adults, even parents. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're spending all days on WhatsApp mm -hmm. chats and you know texting and yeah. calling. We're all glued in. Mm -hmm. So it's also affecting adults too. Mm. But the younger kids are feeling the burn of it a lot more. I'm thinking when my my children are teenagers, like who. Goodness knows what what will manifest then, you know, <laughs> right, in terms of technology, right, right? right? So, what can we as parents do to help our children? To help our children, because it's it's it's. I want to say it's a little bit sad because I've had I've heard of either you know within my friends' community, mm -hmm. my friendship community, you know, of cases where even within the African community, we didn't mm -hmm. think it was. It, we didn't think it would creep in here, but it right. it, it has right. suicide suicide, right? So right. we've had teenagers we've had high schoolers who have committed suicides mm. and that just breaks my heart and i'm like since yeah. when yeah like just since when do you understand why yeah. the love of lives we yeah. love our, do you understand yeah we love but but it's happening it's so happening. so how can we as parents you know what can we do to mm -hmm. to provide a safe haven for our children to to help or even ourselves right mm -hmm. our children like what is there hope oh absolutely there's hope well, let me first of all say that um, the world is still reeling from the pandemic and the effects that it's had on all of us and our mental health. The last three years has been a really been tough, tough time. It's been a tough time. Okay. Um, if you don't know somebody directly who died from COVID, mm -hmm. you oh, no. know, we know yeah. of somebody who knew somebody yes, who died yes. from COVID. No, you're right. Right? Yeah. So no one was unscathed from this. Okay. And even if you didn't know anyone who died directly, you were impacted somehow by mm -hmm. the lockdown, mm -hmm. right? People lost jobs. Yeah. There was a lot of domestic violence. Yeah. There was an increased risk of substance mm -hmm. use. The isolation that I talked about, yeah. how isolation affects mental health, a lot of isolation happened because yeah. people could not connect right. in community. So you were seeing a lot of the consequences okay. of mental health issues, right? And people were actually developing mental illness mm. as a result of that. Okay. So collectively as a community, we are still reeling from the from effects that. of the pandemic. Okay. So we have to give ourselves some grace because okay. we're all just trying to pick up the pieces, okay. right? But pre-pandemic, we're already seeing that the rates of stuff as far as suicidality yeah. and dying from depression, anxiety, things like that, all of that is going up. And that is speaking to just the amount of stress that I think people are dealing with. Okay. Again, not really carving out time okay. to balance mm -hmm. the work and then things outside of work, mm -hmm. feeling a lot of pressure mm -hmm. to achieve. Okay a lot of pressure to have outcomes yeah. because there's a lot of comparisons being yeah. made, yeah. right? Yeah. And so people feel that and they don't have a safe space to talk about their experiences. Mm -hmm. Mental health is still stigmatized, mm -hmm. you know, in communities. A lot mm -hmm. of times I'm talking about stigmatized meaning people keep it a secret, okay. right? They're not really being encouraged to talk about what they're going mm -hmm. through. And so they suffer in silence for a long time. Mm -hmm. Even their loved ones might not worse. know that that's they're dealing with it. And it's yeah. way worse and because worse. you're internalizing it. Right. Imagine it taking that energy, that very yes. dark energy yeah. and turning it inwards. Wow. Not being able to let yeah. it out. Yeah. It kills. And so I definitely want to bring hope because there's so many things that we can do as a community and mm -hmm. as parents to really improve our mental health. And it goes down back to the foundational things that I was talking about. Okay. Building structure in our lives, right? Okay. By really prioritizing sleep, okay. you have to set by example. So you have to do that as parents so your kids can understand the, the, the importance of that. 
I talk to my parents' generation a lot mm -hmm. because they are connected with Nigeria yeah. and other people elsewhere. Their phones are on all the time. Right. Anyone can call me at 2 a.m. And they pick it the up. Time. Ah. And the they will wake up, up and sleep. In my head, I'm like, you would not ah. And I'll I, ask them, what's uh, the emergency? Uh -huh. Oh, there's no emergency. We just are, you know. <laughs> People shortchange sleep in so many ways, right. right? Because of the time zone difference. They think okay. it's okay to call at 1 a.m., 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. No. So I tell people, turn off your phone. Mm. There is hardly anything that requires you to yeah. lose sleep over right. constantly okay. because all you're doing is you're killing yourself slowly. Wow. Okay. So make those boundaries for yourself that okay. you will sleep well mm -hmm. and make that a priority for your kids too, okay. right? Make sure it's a priority that they're eating well. You're eating well. Okay. Lead by example. Eat healthy foods and let them eat healthy foods too. It's fuel for your brain. All of these things are going to enhance their mental health mm -hmm. and the state of well-being, right? Okay. Make sure there's physical activity. You're all moving. Yeah. As Africans, we have to do better, right, in getting out of the house and moving. Mm. Go bike. Go walk. Find trails all around your communities. Mm -hmm. Go around and work out. Do some weight training, something because your heart is actually like keeping track of what it's what the, the burden of mm. not taking care of it hmm. right the the and it the, doesn't lie it does it doesn't not lie, lie. none your lie. organs tell the story yeah. yeah so you really have to do that i think about people where you hear that oh they were working and they had a heart attack on the job and just slumped and, died. and just slumped over yeah. and died or they just had a stroke right there are telltale signs that they weren't probably taking care of themselves like mm. they should have. They were really working too hard and putting a lot of stress right. on themselves. Right. Mental health is related to that too. That that burden yeah. on the mind manifests in the body. They're all interrelated. They're all interrelated. That's right. So you have to lead by example. Make okay. sure that you're doing that for yourself. Everyone should be going to see their doctors to get physical exams every year. The annual exams. Thank yes. you yes. for mentioning that. Oh yes. my goodness. Yeah. You should be checking in with your doctor okay. so they can run the lab tests. Right. They can do the physical exams to make sure everything is going okay. okay. There are so many medical conditions that can actually be causing mental illness and you don't even know it. Mm. You know, that mm -hmm. if they could just manage it for you, mm -hmm. you can get on the right medicines or treatment plan, right. and your life would be so much longer and better. Mm -hmm. We know we're all living to be long these days. Like, yeah. the, the, the longevity of life is actually pretty good. Yeah. What gets in the way are the choices we make in our life that can Along shortchange way, that, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. We're living longer. We should be having fuller lives, mm -hmm. and you can, mm -hmm. but you have to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to do, you know, routine maintenance. And maintenance culture is not something that we know. But, but just as we do, <laughs> but you know, to your point, just as we do with with our cars, yes. right? You have to take it for the for the for the, the monthly, oil change yep. or the you yep. know, yeah. We do that. So, we do tune-ups for our we, cars. Yeah. We do tune-ups for you know. Um, what else can I think about? Like what, in your house, you renovate things right, from time to time, yes. right? You have people come and look over your accounts yep. to make sure things are going okay, but we don't do that to ourselves. We don't take care of our bodies. Wow, wow. And yeah. our bodies are machines yeah. that work, but mm -hmm. you have to, um, you have to make sure that you're just getting a regular checkup. Right. Okay. Yeah. When you see these primary doctors, they know how to screen for mental health mm. issues now, okay. and then they can make the referrals if needed, if okay. you need additional help. Okay. But okay. you have to go and at least get checked so they right. know that everything's You're right, because okay. if you don't go in, then they can't check it, right? They can't to, check to it. To see if... And people like to live in denial, too. Mm. I know sometimes people know there's yeah. something wrong, but they don't want to talk about mm. it. They pretend or, it's not there. Or, or they tune to Google, right? Doc, doc, Dr. Google. They go to Dr. Oh, Google. Oh, let me Google it. That let will get tell them something like, that's very inaccurate, yeah. <laughs> but you're not actually getting the real data you right. need so you can make the outcome. Okay. Okay. So that's something people really think about. And then when it comes to kind of parenting, yeah. I do think, you know, I've talked about structure, right, and making sure you're prioritizing sleep, right. your physical health, your nutrition, mm -hmm. getting your annual checkups, really limiting social media. Okay. Right? And that's something that, you know, when you have young children mm -hmm. at home, it's the job of the parent mm. to have those healthy boundaries at right. home. And you also have to follow those boundaries too. So it's not, it's not, <laughs> it's not do as I say, it's do as I do. Do as I do. do as you I should do. maintain a culture in the okay. household because if not, what you're doing is just being yes. hypocritical you're, you're and you're exactly. sending mixed messages, yeah. right? Yeah. And you're causing situations for your children to not really trust what right. you're saying because right. you're telling them how to do this, but you're doing the same yeah. thing yeah. when you're talking about how it's not healthy for you. Mm -hmm. So we, we all have to emulate and make, you know, change that culture in the mm -hmm. household where we limit the exposure. Mm -hmm. I tell people it's okay to detox from social media. Mm. I promise you the world will not stop turning <laughs> if you unplug <laughs> right. from these apps right. for just a week or a month. Right. Because when, and I, I challenge people to do that. Let's see if you can go two weeks without social media. Okay. Literally two weeks with no Facebook, no Instagram, no Nothing. TikTok. Yeah. You'll be amazed at what, how much time you find yourself having mm -hmm. and how much more productive you're able to do with things with that time. Mm -hmm. Meaning you can make community, 
get into hobbies, actually take time to rest, mm -hmm. actually have time to sleep. Mm. Things that you keep forgoing because mm -hmm. you're work, 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 or whatever yeah, else, or spending time. Media, right? Yeah. And just all that stimulation that mm -hmm. you're getting from those images, just take a break. Mm -hmm. Because your emotional state needs to be reset too. Okay. So you're not so reactive and hypersensitive to everything going on all around you. So I think it is therapeutic. Okay. It's medicine okay. to unplug. Wow. That <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna that no that that's and I'm I'm happy you say that because there is hope right there's well, hope. we can do these things as parents we can we can affect these things yes. both in our lives yes. and and then in our household and then the last point I want to yeah. make on what parents should do and this is very critical okay this is I think a make or break okay outside of all the other things I've talked about because it's a cultural thing mm -hmm. but I also think it's a generational thing it ties into the making time okay the time aspect right, right? Most people fill up their time with um, endeavors to make money or yeah. you know succeed in careers yeah. or whatever else. Socialize. Mm -hmm. We have to make time to connect with our children as a family, as a family, as a family. and get to know your children, because that is one missing piece. I think that a lot of parents yeah. don't understand or know what their children are going through, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are suffering in silence. Mm -hmm. But you have to make time to create space, a safe space for them okay. to want to come to you with anything right with what they're with going what, through yeah but they won't do that if they don't trust you or your intentions okay. yeah. right they won't do that if they feel like they're constantly in an environment where they're being shamed mm -hmm. being criticized mm -hmm. right being bullied mm -hmm. a lot of kids talk about the trauma they have from the type of parenting even though the parent means well yeah some of those methods we mm -hmm. have to look about what is the intent we're trying to create well you know how when we're growing up mm -hmm. right Especially in the African household, or, or let, let me just take into Nigerian. One, um, one Nigerian. So let's just break it down to Nigerian. You know, so growing up, like it was tough love for. Mm -hmm. I mean, my dad was a disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. You dare not. Are you kidding? You got Same sorry. Here. Sorry, you, you didn't. You mean you mean you took second in, in class? Yes. You did not take first. Yes. So the person who took first had two heads. <laughs> you, you know, you know that kind of thing, right? Right, right. It, but it was tough. I we didn't break. We didn't, right. It was just kind of like, okay, all right. I guess I have to, you know. And yeah. then the next term or next semester, you took first or whatever, you know. <laughs> but we we almost can't even try that these days. It, it, it just seems like maybe there's more fragility. Is that what it is? Or? I don't think so. Okay. I think a lot of people feel like the tough love didn't break them. And to some extent, I think there were some very positive consequences of having tough love. Okay. But there are a lot of people who are carrying unhealed trauma. Mm, from, you're and, right. and I want to okay. be very clear on that. There are a okay. lot of people carrying around unhealed trauma yeah. that they're passing on to their children. Wow. And their children are suffering from things that the parents didn't do the work on to wow. heal from. Yeah. Okay. So that's something really important to say. And I don't think it's a matter of, you know, are they just more fragile? It's a different time. Time. Like you okay. said, it's a different time. Right. Some of the techniques from our parents' generation that work for us, it's not going to work in this generation. Definitely not going to work. Yeah. You <laughs> really, today, these kids, because of the information that they're being exposed to, mm -hmm. they're almost like many adults. They're having to deal with emotions and feelings mm -hmm. and, and access quickly, to information early on. from a very young age. So they have mouths to tell mm -hmm. you their formed ideas, however irrational it can be. <laughs> but they will come with these ideas and tell you. And most times, parents are just looking like, how? Mm -hmm. How is this five-year-old mm -hmm. having How does well, this five-year-old have feelings? What? Feelings. Like, oh, you hurt my feelings. Like, sorry, you have feelings? <laughs> you know, like, I didn't have feelings. Yeah. They do, and they're in tune with it. With because <laughs> the culture today now is people know to check in with their emotional and psychological well-being. <laughs> and as parents, it's your job to validate their feelings. Mm. Now, so don't dismiss. The don't dismiss it. Because when you invalidate children, yeah. all you're doing is teaching them that feelings don't matter. Mm, and that's not good. That is not healthy. Okay. Feelings matter. Yeah. And it's not to say you need to give in to your, you know, whatever your rules or boundaries yeah. are. That's not what we're saying. Okay. Parent your children as you should. Right. Have the appropriate boundaries and rules that you should. Okay. Don't invalidate them. Oh, okay. Right? If they have a feeling and they're feeling hurt, the fact that they're even able to express it is a strength. It's good. It's that's a good, good yeah. thing. Yeah. Because most people keep it and they mm. never talk about mm -hmm. it, but they suffer. A lot of people suffer, and those feelings can actually, what we call metabolize, it can switch into something physical. Mm -hmm. We don't want that. We want people to feel um, empowered to talk about how they mm -hmm. feel. Validate them, don't dismiss them. But as a parent, it's your, it's your job to create the time to mm -hmm. explain your rationale. Mm -hmm. Most people are reasonable. Kids are too, mm -hmm. right? It takes a lot of patience. It does take patience. It takes a lot of patience. Right. But if you're at least able to try and emulate that safe environment, yeah. you will go a long way. Because what kids are doing nowadays, 
when parents are not trying to understand them or even understand anything they are going through, the kids are gonna cut you off. Yeah, yeah. And, and when I mean cut that. you off, you don't know that they've cut you off. They're still there, Okay. but they're not well, they're really there. Out. Yeah. Yeah. And they're living their lives, yeah. and you are on the outside looking in. And you don't even know what's going on. So I think it's important to have an authentic relationship with your child. It's a challenge, I understand, because there's a generational divide. Mm -hmm. Everything that you just said, well, in my times, this is not mm -hmm. how it was. It's a generational divide. Mm -hmm. But try to meet them halfway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I promise you these kids are going to respond. Mm. If you actually create an environment where they feel like they can trust you with how they feel, safe, huh? and they feel safe, yeah. they will talk. They will talk. That I know. They, they, they talk. will talk. They will talk. So I feel like that is one take-home <laughs> point I want to talk okay. about with children. There's, there's a lot of hope for the next generation. Okay. These children are smart. Mm -hmm. They're bright. They are the They're future. Sharp. Yeah. Very sharp. Yeah. I'm yeah. excited to see what the next generation comes up mm -hmm. with. They are, I mean, these people are talented. Mm -hmm. They're creative. They express themselves in ways that we never thought, I mean, and at younger ages. Mm -hmm. They're very brilliant. Mm -hmm. Right? And so we really, and as parents, don't, no one is saying you need to be their best friend. You mm -hmm. don't, you know, there's a difference between being a friend and being a parent. Yeah. Be a parent. But try to get to know your child. Yeah. Learn their personality. Yeah. Yeah. Learn the things that bring them joy, mm -hmm. make them happy. Relate with them openly. Yeah. But that takes time. And a lot of parents don't either have time, don't want to make time, and they don't prioritize it. Spend the time. They huh? don't. Look, Dr. Yeni, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. you know, we can literally spend 24 hours, hours. Just really talking about hours. this. I mean, it, you, and it can morph, you know. Yes. I'm going to have you back on the show <laughs> with, I'll probably have your siblings here. You know, let's, talk, let's talk about it, Absolutely. you know. But, um, Absolutely. It, 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 thank you so much for, for, for being sure. here. You know, let's, let's get to know you a little bit more. Just, sure. you know, yeah. Sure. So what is your favorite um, Nigerian dish? <laughs> I know I just talked about nutrition and healthy food, so don't judge me. They're like, you're about to shoot yourself in the foot now, I'm right? I'm like, listen, but in moderation, I don't eat it, I don't eat it a lot, okay. I really don't. Okay. And not because I can't cook it, I can't, right. but I don't eat it a lot because of health. It's pounded yam and it goes. Are you serious? <laughs> ah, that With assorted meats, that's okay. my favorite. It's a hard line between that uh -huh. and jollof fries, fried fries, fries, fries right. with fried plantain. Okay. Ripe, 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 ripe plantain. Uh, with dodo. I, with, uh, fried dodo. <laughs> Do you like your your dodo slanted or like the or like more block like slanted? Slanted. Yeah, slanted that crunch. Is the way to go. You know yes. the crunch at the. Oh, yes. Don't get me yes. started. Yeah. I will do box one uh -huh. every once in a while, but yeah. you gotta slant it. You gotta like slant it. Cut it up and just eat <laughs> each mouthful. Go Look at you. Look at you. You guys. If you're Nigerian food is the best. Nigerian food is the best. It is. It is. I know what makes me happy. Even the social media we're talking about, you yes. see how everyone yes. is now trying this fufu and egusi. Like literally everyone, irrespective of race, tribe, it's, like where you're from, you could even be from Australia. There is just a joy and happiness <laughs> that comes with eating fufu and egusi. And soup. egusi that soup. is the best pairing of fufu. <laughs> you eat it, and there's just look at that. He's like, boo, boo, they, boo, I'm boo, telling boo. you, you gotta admit it is the best thing is, ever, but is. in moderation. In moderation. In moderation. Yes, in moderation. That's no. it. <laughs> Doctor, thank you so much for being here. The one last question I have for you, yes. and maybe in two minutes or less, yes. um, maybe just tell us why mentorship is important, because I know that's mm. one of the ways you give back to the community, yes. right? You mentor um, uh, college you know, yes. kids as well as medical school kids. So, yes. so why is it important in two minutes or less? Man, uh, I, know, I, right? like, I love like, what, that question. Right. I love it because it speaks to uh, me loving relationships. I okay. love to connect with people. And I feel like the best way to groom leaders of tomorrow, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an aspiring leader. I'm a leader myself. Right. I want others to kind of come behind me and do the same thing and teach others. Right. It's through relationship. Okay. And so I do that through mentorship, okay. right? In mental health right now, there's not a lot of us black women. Okay. There's not a lot of Nigerian women. Okay in the field as medical doctors. I think that because of the stigma for a long time, okay. going into medical field, mm -hmm. uh, the specialties, mm -hmm. um, I mean, even myself, when I was coming up as a, as a young, aspiring medical student, okay. I was talked out of going into mental health. Oh, wow. I actually started off a different specialty. Okay. I did. Okay. Um, because I was talked out by well-meaning family members okay. and friends who were just like, why? Because you know, the, 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 the thought in our culture is that you kind of have to be crazy yourself. 
well mm -hmm. <laughs> deal with <laughs> to crazy be people. in that field, right? That's mm -hmm. the thing, and mm -hmm. that's what they call it. You know, and it's from a lack of awareness, okay. right, about what mental health, mental illness is, all of that. Mm -hmm. So it took my own personal journey, okay, a lot of deviations for me to kind of get to this point. Okay. And I know the struggles that I had, and when I didn't have specific mentors in in psychiatry and mental health. Okay. And so it's very important for me to let others know, like, it's okay if you actually want to go into this field. Okay. We need more of us. Okay. okay. We need more of us to represent. We need more of us to advocate. Yeah. We need more of us to go out there and enlighten people, teach people, help people understand it's okay to talk about mental health. Mm -hmm. It's okay to try to, you know, work through mental illness mm -hmm. if you have it. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not damaged. You're not mm -hmm. broken. Mental illness happens to us just like health issues happen to right. us. There's treatment for most of it, mm -hmm. all of it really. There are ways that you can try to improve your quality of life. Mm -hmm. So I want people to understand it's okay. So okay. I work with um, college students, yeah. I work with medical students and residents right. um, that look like me specifically. I really try to work okay. with underrepresented so you, minorities. So you're, you're, you're deliberate about it. I'm very intentional about it. About okay. it. Viewers, we've had so much fun having Dr. Oyeni on the show to just enlighten us about mental health. Doctor, thank you so much for being here. This thank is you. This is fantastic. I think we've had a fantastic conversation about thank it. You. I've learned a lot, even from this process. That's great. Right? And, <laughs> and I think the one key takeaway for me, or viewers, the one key, key takeaway from this episode, I think, is there is no help without mental health. And as parents, the onus is on us to really have out that time mm -hmm. to get to know our kids yes right really get to engage them get to and not superficially right not mm -hmm. on, a super, on a superficial level really get to know them what makes them tick what makes them who they are you right. know just um like in a wholesome way right yeah. and the only way to do that is just really carving out time to spend with them right that's it yeah okay absolutely thank you so much i hope to have you again on the show <laughs> i would right? love to come back thank you so much for having me i enjoy just talking to you and you know this is something i'm passionate about so it was an honor to be here thank you See, no breeze again celebrity <laughs> abc Fox, you know and all of these many many things but um uh, i am super excited <laughs> so guys you. thank this you this is the kind of um these are the kind of caliber of guests i have on my show right just people who pay it forward, right? Mm -hmm. So she talked about mentorship, we talked about mental health, you know, but it's just really paying it forward, that interaction, the community, and it's really, really important. There is no health without mental health. You had a sleep. That's seven it. to nine hours. That's Do you it. understand? Go and get I know these entrepreneurs are like, ah, it's overrated, four yeah. hours. Yeah. She's just told you the doc has spoken. Seven to nine hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is very important. So on to the next time on this show. If you have not subscribed, I think I will send my mother eh, to come and get you people. Do you understand? <laughs> Subscribe to my show, share and like the goodness of conversations with you, I'll catch you next time. Bye now.